Hi, my name's Marty and today we're going to be fret dressing a kick guitar. Now fret dressing involves three specific tasks. We're gonna be leveling the frets. Obviously uh, leveling the frets will reduce the incidence of fret buzz and dead notes occurring. Uh, secondly, we're gonna crown the frets, which means we're reducing the point of impact on top of the fret wise for the strings. And thirdly, we're gonna be polishing the frets just so the strings glide across the frets nicely when we're performing bends. So firstly, you're gonna need a few tools for this job. Now, the first tool you're gonna need is a neck rest. I've also got a timber block here that'll sit under the heel of the neck. And this is just to keep the neck nice and stable while we're working on it. The next thing you will need is a notched straight edge. Now this is essentially just a straight edge with notches cut at the intervals of the frets of the guitar. One side for uh, Fender scale length, 25.5, and the other side for Gibson scale length, which is 24.75 inches. Um, we're also gonna need a permanent marker to mark the top of our frets. Now I'd also recommend using a fret rocker. I've got a string action guide here I'm going to use instead, but um, a fret rocker is generally a, or specifically is a three-sided tool you put over your frets. Now, each side is slightly narrower than the, than the previous side, and that allows you to check three frets the higher up the neck you go. And what you're essentially doing with that tool is putting it across the frets like so, and if the fret rocks at all, or if the, uh, the tool rocks, I should say, you, you will then know that the middle fret is a little bit higher. You can mark that and then come back to it. Uh, now the other thing I'm using is a fret leveling beam. Now this is, um, this is obviously not used for spot leveling. What, the, what you do here is level the entire fretboard, which is what we're going to be doing today anyway. The other thing I've got here is a double-sided uh, crowning tool, crowning file, which I'll explain more about as we, as we get further along in the process. I've also got a three-sided file here with um, diamond inlays. I've got uh, fret guards here at different sizes. Now I don't normally use these, but they are a good option as well. What I prefer to use is masking tape just to protect the uh, fretboard and the nut. And lastly, I've got some super fine grade steel wool which we'll use to polish the, uh, polish the frets, which I'll explain more as we go along. First thing we really wanna do is get the neck supported. As you can see, I've got this on the, on the neck rest and just ensure that the neck is dead level. Now, this is really important. We need to get this right because if the neck is not dead level, we can't follow our frets level. And once the tension's applied to the neck from the strings, we're gonna run into problems. So you do, unfortunately, you will need a not straight edge. There's no way around that. Um, now these are a straight edge tool. As I said before in the intro, they're cut to different scale lengths. So this one's 25.5, which is for fender style necks. I just sit that on top of the fretboard and get down to eye level. And I'm just looking for any gaps. Now, I've already adjusted the truss rod on this and got this dead straight, but what you wanna do if you need to, need to uh, introduce relief, you need to loosen the truss rod, so turn it clockwise. If you need to add, add some relief or add tension, you need to turn it counterclockwise. Now just work in small increments, an eighth to a quarter of a turn each time and just check. And once you're satisfied that the next dead straight, just check it again, and we're ready to move on to the to the next part of the job. Now the other tool you could use, which I don't currently have here at the moment, I seem to have misplaced it, is a fret rocker. Now a fret rocker is a three-sided tool that allows you to check three frets at a time. And what you're doing, I'll just use this string action guide ruler as a substitute for now, but what you're generally doing is trying to measure we're trying to just run the hard edge across the three frets like so. Now if there's any movement, you, you would know that the fret on the middle or the middle fret would be higher than the, the two adjacent frets and you would know you need to bring the height down on that. We're not gonna do that today, that's, um, that's spot leveling. What I wanna actually do is fret dress this entire neck. So first thing I do is apply some masking tape to the nut. And some people remove the nut at this stage, that's also something you can do, especially if you're gonna replace the nut anyway. Um, what I'd recommend otherwise is just to get a couple of couple of pieces of masking tape and just um, cover that nut. You don't also want to, you want to be careful when you're when you're level level uh, sanding the the frets that you don't knock the nut out of place. Okay, so the first thing we do is we go across and we mark all the fret wires with permanent marker just on top like so. We're just marking the top of all the frets. And the reason we do that, when we run 
when we run our leveling beam across the frets, we can periodically check to see if there's any ink or any permanent marker remaining on any of those frets. And that will indicate that the sandpaper underside of the leveling beam hasn't touched those frets yet, which would indicate the frets are low. So to get all the frets level, we'll be removing the entirety of the, uh, of the permanent marker. Okay, so just using your leveling beam, keep it straight. You don't want it off at an angle. Keep it dead straight. Now I don't press down very hard at all here. I'm just really letting the weight of the beam do the work. I'm just sliding it back and forth. Now as I move towards the edge, I'm keeping it straight as well. Now there is a taper to most guitar necks from about the 15th fret up, so just keep that in mind as well. The other thing you'll probably experience is fret fall away, which tends to happen from about the 14th, 15th fret upwards as well. And that's really just because, well, the, well, the fretboard ends here, the, uh, the bridge is somewhere over here. And that means that the oscillation of the strings or the vibrational pattern of the strings in this point is at its greatest. So what we need to do is just introduce just a slight amount of fall away as a lot of guitars tend to develop fret buzz around this area. So as I bring the camera down now, you can see a lot of that ink's being removed, but we've still just got a little bit a bit around some of the frets here indicating that they're they're still a little low so I'm just going to keep working with the beam be careful just to check your work fairly regularly okay and that's looking good so from here I would also just from about the 15th fret just working in a slight angle just trying to take a little bit more material off the very last fret and then gradually increase the height as we go just to take care of that fret fall away issue I mentioned earlier. So just take in mind also the uh, the taper. And normally these things, fret fall away especially, is showing more of an issue with your bass strings, but um, we do the entire fret obviously. Okay, so once we've leveled our frets, what we need to do next is obviously remove any of the uh, filing. So I'm just using some compressed air for that. If you've got a, uh, you know, a brush, that'll be fine as well. The next thing we want to do, we bring the camera down. You can just see the edges of the frets have a slight bevel to them. It's about a millimetre. And uh, just want to make sure that they're the fret ends are nice and smooth. They can really affect playability otherwise. So. I've just got the leveling beam on an angle. I'm just going to run down, run down the side there like so. Again, you could use your uh, your fret file for this. Just keep it on on a matching angle. I'm just going to use the uh, leveling beam here. Just run the entire length of the neck. Obviously, do that the other side as well. Now this isn't a bound neck, obviously you may want to consider masking off the uh, entire neck if so, but um, this is um, yeah, mostly unaffected by that sort of thing. Now um, from here what we want to do is crown the fret. So if I bring the camera down, you can see the tops, tops of this fret here, for example, is really quite flat on top. Um, and that's because we've leveled, leveled the frets, which means we've brought the height down and that's taken away some of the roundness at the top of the fret. So what we want to do is reduce that that surface area for where the strings make contact. It's um, you know if you've got if, if it's too wide the fret the fret area where the strings are touching you can have um, incidences of fret buzz and generally um, you may have tuning and intonation issues. So but what we want to do is make that point of contact as narrow as possible. So the best way to go about this is I'll just work on this fret here because it's nice and flat. Put a nice thick line down. Now what I like to do is just work on one fret at a time. So obviously I would, doing the whole neck, I'd work from the first fret on, but as we're trying to keep this video relatively short, I'm just going to work on this fret here. Now I'm applying masking tape beside each fret. This saves having to do it for each fret at once. Now if I was doing the entire neck, what some people like to do is mask off the entire neck, but that involves either cutting cutting away the tape where the fret wires are or cutting the tape to fit. Now, as you can see, as you get higher up the neck, 
even using the thinner painter's masking tape like that, you still need to actually cut cut the tape, which I found quite time consuming. So I prefer to just do one thread at a time this way. Okay, so what I've got here is a double-sided fret crowning tool. Generally one side will be reserved for jumbo frets or just guitars in this case, and the other side for smaller stringed instruments like ukuleles. We pick the side that fits your frets well. I find the narrow side works better on this particular guitar. And what I'm, what I'm doing is just sitting it over and working with the taper of the neck, I'm starting on a slight angle and just working across. Now I'm only working in one direction. I find when you go back and forth with these type of files, especially diamond files, that um, the file will wear out rather quickly. I'm not pressing too hard here. And essentially what I'm doing is just keeping an eye on that line. And what we're trying to do is narrow that line down. And when that when that line's nice and narrow, we know that we've reduced the uh, the surface area at the top of the fret. Okay, so we we'll bring the camera down now. We can see that that line's nice and narrow now, which indicates that we've crowned the uh, the fret effectively. Now you would obviously then go along and repeat this process for all of the strings. You don't need to use uh, masking tape like I have here. You could use a fret guard, for example. It just sits over the fret like so. You'll generally get these in a set where you'll have different sizes for your different frets. And the next job we need to do is just polish the frets. Now we polish the frets to uh, ensure that the strings will glide across the frets when we're performing bends. And so just taking some 1200 grit sandpaper here, I'm just working from, put a slight bend in the sandpaper and just work from the side. So being very careful not to remove any material off the top that I can help or at least as little as possible. From the other side as well. We're just so we're going to work with the end of that bevel. Now another method I should just point out too when it comes to crowning is you can use a three three sided file like so what a lot of people use is a have a side ground off so it's not going to damage the fretboard and um, as you go along you generally roll the file inwards and you you would obviously mark the fret as we've done to use our fret crowning tool and as you're using the file you'd roll inwards like so and then you'd follow up by rounding the end of the fret just by running across once. That's all you'd really need to do. You don't need to remove too much material. Okay, so from here, as I said, we're now polishing the fret, so just running the sandpaper across it. Trying to avoid the top where possible. But of course, the sandpaper is gonna come into contact with the top a little bit. And when we feel we've taken it as far as we can with the sandpaper, I'll move on to some super fine grade steel wool that you normally get at um, local hardware or hobby, hobby and craft stores. And again, I'm just trying to work from the sides again. Make sure you're doing those ends as well. Okay, so we bring the fret that we've been working on up to the camera. You can see that's a lot shinier now. Now that's that's nice and polished now, which means the string will glide over well. What you can do from here as well is use a polishing compound or um, or follow that up with specific uh, or specialized fret erasers, which you can normally buy from Luthia uh, Luthia Supplies. In my experience, I've found that the uh, the 1200 grit followed by the super fine steel grade 
uh, super fine grade steel wool is pretty effective, but of course you can always take things further. Okay, so hope that helps. Next time you're performing a fret dress and uh, best of luck.